Welcome to our lecture online. Here again, we're taking another look at what space is, and we're going to try to figure it out by looking at the various properties of space. And in this case, we're going to again look at how light bends through space as it approaches a large object like the sun. But now we're going to take a look at it in terms of the index of refraction of space. Now, what is the index of refraction? Well, it turns out that when light goes from one medium to another medium and they have a different index of refraction, it usually changes direction and it changes speed. For example, when we have a, when we have a light beam that travels from underneath the water into air, it will bend away from what we call the normal because it goes from a high index of refraction to a low index of refraction. And the other way around, when light comes from air and goes to water, it travels through a low index of refraction into a high index of refraction and will bend towards the normal. So you can see that light will bend as it goes across that interface. It is also visible when we take a look at the Earth and the atmosphere. As light comes in from the Sun, for example, and it enters our atmosphere because the index of refraction of the atmosphere is greater than the index of refraction of free space, it begins to bend in this direction. And that's the reason why we sometimes in the desert or on the hot road will see mirages because the image of the sky will then seem to come from the ground as we're driving along the road or we're walking along the desert. In the distance we'll see something that is simply that light that came around and is now reaching our eyes but it came from, from the air and it shows the sky that now looks like some water in the distance. So we know that happens. Now when we take a look at what light does again, when it comes from a star far away, light will come this way and then will bend around the sun because of, well, whatever space is doing to, uh, or whatever the sun is doing to the space around it, it causes light to change. But notice the bending of light is in the opposite direction than what we see in the atmosphere. So it almost seems as if the index of refraction of space around the large object is less than one causing the bend to go in this direction. Now there's another really interesting part about light traveling through different mediums. Over here, when it travels through water, it will travel slower. And of course I have that indicated here. And here when it travels through the air, light will travel faster. And notice that if light travels from this location to this location, it will always take the path of least time. The amount of time that light takes to travel from this position to this position is the least amount of time by traveling like this. If light were to travel in a different path, for example, like this and not like this. Oh, actually, let me try that again. So if light were to travel to here and then to here, that would take longer. If light were to travel to here and then to there, that would take longer. Light will always take the path that takes the least amount of time to get from point A to point B. And so here again, we would expect light to travel the path that will take the least amount of time from this position to this position, and that bend will therefore be exactly what it needs to be for that time transit, that transit time to be the least of the time. Any other type of bending will cause light to take longer to get there. So is there again some relationship between the index of refraction and what happens to space when you put a large object in it? It appears as if it causes the index of refraction around the object to decrease, which therefore causes the light to bend in that region. So either it does that because space is warped and it follows the warp of space, or the index of refraction is different, less, for example, near a large object cause a light to bend. And of course here, the effect of the atmosphere would then be greater than the effect of the bending or the change of index of refraction space because of the Earth, and therefore you still have the light going like this, because the atmospheric index of refraction is, of the air is quite a bit bigger, relatively speaking, than the index of refraction of space. So again, there does seem to be something that happens to space when you put a large object in space. Either it causes space to warp and light simply follows the shortest path through the warp, or it changes the index of refraction and light simply follows the index of refraction in such a way that it takes the least amount of time to go from point A to point B, just like it does there in the laboratory. So again, space has all kinds of properties 
and perhaps it has a property of the index of refraction being different if it's near an object. Now what we also know is that when the index of refraction changes like this for water and, and light travels much more slowly, we also know that the what we call the, permi the uh, permittivity of, of this region also changes in the exact proportion to the change in the speed. So again, like we talked before in an earlier video, that space has a permeability constant and it has a permittivity constant. <clears throat> we know that when the index of refraction changes, it causes a change in the permittivity of that region, which causes the exact change in the speed of light that we see. It all seems to fit together. It all seems to be that everything seems to be controlled by the properties of space which then control the speed at which light travels, the direction at which light travels, it causes the force of gravity, it causes all these things, the forces between charges, it causes the magnetic fields to exist, amazing things, all because of what space is. Space seems to do a lot of things, and so therefore it's so interesting, and we're trying to get to the secret of what space is all about. So, we'll continue the journey in trying to establish what we know and don't know about space. The sun and the earth went down in, so the star is not going to enter, the light is not going to enter the atmosphere and refract the other way? So, if we go to the earth, if this was a star instead of the sun, the very same thing would happen because the atmosphere index of refraction is greater than it is a free space, so you're going to see uh, the light bending away from the Earth because of the atmosphere. If there, wasn't no, if there was no atmosphere, perhaps we see the same thing that it would bend towards the Earth like it does on the Sun. So that we don't know because the atmosphere keeps us from figuring that one out. So, you, so if the Sun was actually a star... Well, it is a star, I mean, right? A star, far away star, would it bend through uh, the Earth's atmosphere too? So, light coming from any source, be it the sun, being a star, when it enters the atmosphere, there's going to be bending of the light because of the index of refraction changes for air as compared to space. So, because it has air in it, there's a slight change in the index of refraction which causes light to bend outward. Here, there's no atmosphere away from the sun, and so therefore it bends towards the sun. The thinking then is perhaps the index of refraction is less when you put a large object in space. Yes, yes, because of the atmosphere. However, if the light were to go past the atmosphere, if the light passed the Earth here instead of where the atmosphere is, then it would bend just like with the Sun.